and that theory is called the fundamental theory of arithmetic. Okay, n is there on the board like that. Any integer n more than one has a unique factorization up to the order, so the order doesn't matter. Um, n equals to p1 e1 to the power of e1, p2 to the power of e2, all the way to ps to the power of ps, where p1, p2, and ps are distinct primes, and e1, e2, and es are positive integers. Okay. Now, I, I know that I've been appearing on YouTube a lot, and you guys can just drop me any comments because we are all learning in this process. Okay, and I must say that for me to find a really um, powerful proof both that balances simplicity and mathematical rigor was a bit difficult so if I make any mistakes okay I don't I don't assume that I know everything or I don't assume that this is the best proof that I have but if I make any mistakes I'll be really happy if you let me know okay but I still gonna do my best to motivate us or to motivate the viewers to look at this theory uh, theorem right here the fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay so this is what we have over here and we're gonna prove it via induction okay now if those who are familiar with induction I don't need to explain it but just briefly speaking is that we're gonna it's two-step process we show that it's true for a certain case and then after that assuming that that is true for a certain number we can prove the the whole thing the whole proposition this is called the proposition right here and let's just label it equation number one okay so for the first step now let's n sorry let n okay let's n equals to 2. Now if n is equals to 2, we can just simply write n is equals to 2, which is equals to 2 to the power of 1. Not a problem like that. It, it follows the factorization, okay? So, proposition, okay, n equals to 2, uh, proposition, let's just say uh, proposition, proposition is true, okay? So, it is true for n equals to 2. Now, for the next step, okay, we're gonna have to use what we call a uh, induction hypothesis now you might be confused what what the heck an induction hypothesis means but let's just assume that the induction hypothesis is true so what is the induction hypothesis that means for some k okay um where we got two more uh, less than or equal to k which is less than or equal to n proposition is true Okay, now here is a few things to take note. Notice that I put k over here. Sorry, this would be less than n. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I, I put k over here because uh, I have not proved the main proposition yet. Okay, I'm just using an induction hypothesis. This is what the induction hypothesis is called. Is that, let's just say that there's some value of k that it fits inside this range over here and it's true for the unit factorization. Now, have, have I shown this? Well, doesn't matter, okay? This is the induction hypothesis, so we will just assume that the induction hypothesis is true, okay? So now we'll go on, okay, by showing that the proposition is true. So now we are focusing on n, okay? The induction hypothesis will come down later in the argument, but right now, let's just focus on n. So, if n is prime, okay, now we're focusing on the main proposition and we're dealing with n over here. So, if n is prime, okay, n, we can just simply write n equals to the prime number, whatever it is. So, it's equals to p1 and it's equals to p1 to the power of 1. You see, n is prime, so that it, it doesn't matter. It already shows that it has the unique factorization, okay? It is equal to that prime number. The prime number can only be divided by itself and 1, so it's equal to the prime number to the power of 1. So, proposition is true, okay? So, the proposition is true for n if n is prime. So, now, here's the next step. If n is not prime, okay? Now, if n is not prime, meaning that we can now factor n, right? Okay, we can factor n. So, we write n is equals to x and y, okay? However, what do we know about x and y? You see, n is a certain number, so when we divide it, logically, right, we will get something like that, correct? Can I say that? Now, let's observe this statement. Does that statement make sense? n is equals to x and y, n is not prime, we can divide it, n is equals to x and y, and it's obvious that x and x and y, each of them is going to be less than n, so we're going to divide it like so. So now we know that, okay, x and y is less than n, so now we can use the induction hypothesis and apply it to x and y, assuming again that the induction hypothesis is true. Well, what's the hypo induction hypothesis? Well, for some value k, which is less than n, it has that unique factorization. So, we will just simply write x is equals to q1, not to be confused with the prime numbers over here. The prime numbers here are p1, p2. We will just change it to q1 and q2. It doesn't really matter, okay? e1, we just take it to a certain power, okay? q2, e2 to the certain power, and multiply all the way to qs, okay, es. 
So that's the unit factorization for x, because again, x is less than n. So the unit factorization for y, we will just change it up and put um, q dash 1, e dash 1, q dash 2, e dash, sorry, e dash 2, all the way to q dash t, e dash t. Okay, we are just changing the variables, and I mean, they, they, we don't know whether they're the same or different, so we will just put them up like that. Okay, so knowing that x is expressed as this, y is expressed as this, from the induction hypothesis, now we can write, which let's just um, erase this, write n is equals to x and y, which is equals to, from the previous, by using the induction hypothesis, is q1, e1, q2, e2, all the way to q, s, e, s, followed by q dash 1, e dash 1, q dash 2, e dash 2, all the way to q dash t, e dash t. Okay, I'm just re-expressing n. Remember, n is equals to x times y. Okay, now, maybe, okay, maybe, you see, I got q1 here and I got a q dash 1, a, a q and a q dash. Maybe some of them are the same. So, let's just say for some i, q1 is equals to q dash i, okay, and it would be Sorry, q dash i to the power of e dash i. Okay, some of the prime numbers could be the same. Okay, I'm not, I'm not denying that it could be the same. Now, we don't know. But let's just say within this factorization of x and y, some of them are the same. So, for some i, if they are the same, I can just simply write that as q... Sorry, yeah, it goes to this. So, q1 e1, okay, times by q dash 1 e dash 1 sorry, e dash i, okay, is equals to, so there has to be 1 over here, q1 e1 plus e dash i, correct, okay? Now, why do I want to write this statement here? I write this statement here simply because I want to combine the prime numbers that are the same, okay? Now, looking at the main proposition, we have p1, p2, p, f are distinct primes. So, I want to just try to truncate this statement so that the ones that are distinct, I will just add them up, add the powers up. Simple algebra, okay? Uh, doesn't really matter. So, now, we can write that, okay? Okay, now, why, how does that work out? Okay, now, here is the step of the induction hypothesis, okay? Which I will try my best to explain. Okay, uh, I better write it down here, okay? Two, Okay, now this is the induction hypothesis, right? And the induction hypothesis, okay, it says that if we can think of a value for some value k, right, k is an integer, as the unique factorization as the one over here, but k has to be less than n, right? So, how we can now say that the induction hypothesis is true? Well, simply because we have proven the induction hypothesis to be true when k is equals to 2. Okay, does that make sense? You see, n is equals to the proposition is true. So obviously, if k is equals to 2, it has that unique factorization, right? Okay, now that, now that we know that it has the unique factorization when k is equals to 2, let's just think of a value of n which is more than 2. So let, if we take a 3, right? Okay, but 3 is prime. You see, um, we've got p, sorry, n, we're going to break it up into prime and not prime, right? Prime and not prime, okay. So if it's prime, it doesn't matter. It already falls in the factorization. If it's prime, it already falls into the factorization over here like this. If it's not prime, okay, we can divide it, right? Divide it into the x and y as, as I have shown you in the previous step. So, four, now three. Three is prime, we already got it, check. Now, n is equals to four. n is equals to four is less than two, that's correct. But now we can re-express n into x and y. And then it's two and two, right? Two times two is equals to four. So, but what we know about when, when k is equals to 2, we know that when k equals to 2, the proposition is true. So that would simply mean that now it is, tr and now it is true when n is equals to 4. Yeah, when n is equals to 4, we can break it up into x and y, 2 and 2. The proposition is true when k is equals to 2. So, therefore, by multiplying them together and combining the powers, okay, it, it, it follows the proposition. n satisfies the equation over here, the proposition. So now we have shown that it's true for n equals to 4, or k equals to 4, right? So n equals to 5 is prime check, n is equals to 6, it is not prime, so we can break it up into 3 and 2. But again, what do we know about 3 and 2? We know that 3 and 2 is less than n, and it follows the proposition that it will be true, because now we have shown it to be true for a, k equals to 2, 3, and 4. You see, so this is the induction process. It just keeps on... I don't know what's the term for, maybe steamrolling, okay, it keeps on steamrolling, that 
is true for a certain number, that will imply that the next step up, it will be true because n is greater than k. Okay, so we just keep on going through the process and now we have just simply showed that it is true for n positive, for n is more than 1. There's a unique factorization like that over there. Okay, so that is briefly the induction hypothesis, okay, sorry, the, the proof by induction of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. However, we are not done yet, are we? Because there is one more term that we have missed out and that is unique factorization. Okay, wow. How are we going to show that? Okay, we will try, I will do my best, okay, and we'll see how it goes. A unique factorization. 